Hello friends, it is Philly Philly. Welcome to my kitchen. It is Wednesday and I'm about to do a absolute, an absolutely delicious stream with some amazing pasta that I'm super excited to try. And first though, it is Wednesday and it is Wine Wednesday in some areas of this world. So um, I thought, you know what? I'm going to pour myself a glass of wine. One of the favorite times I like to drink wine is when I'm cooking. So tonight I'm feeling it and so since it's Wednesday, let's do it. So with my pasta tonight, which by the way, if you're just joining us, we are gonna be making a brown butter ricotta pasta. I'm gonna tell you more about that pasta, its creator, and about the whole brown butter like fad that has been going on for the past year or so. Uh, but first, let's break open this wine. This is a Pinot Noir from California. I think I might have mentioned this one on stream before. And it's called Calavita, I think is how you say it. And this is my second purchase because we liked it so much the first time. We went back and bought two. Um, it's just very, I don't know, I feel like it's a Pinot that would go with so many things. Not that Pinot doesn't go with many things, but one of my favorites, which is May May, not May May, um, Miomi. I was thinking of a restaurant here in Philly. One of my favorites, which is Miomi. Um, they have a wonderful Pinot Noir, but it definitely, it definitely has some different, almost fall flavors, and so I feel like it speaks to what I like to drink it with. Um, whereas this Pinot is just would be delightful with honestly at anything. So as you can see, my little shortcut. Let me put this away actually for getting open wine bottles. Um, I asked for one of these years ago. I was so done with. Sometimes, you know, in fact, I forgot to take off the foil. That was kind of a misstep on my part. We actually have foil cutters that we use, um, but it kind of just took it out anyway, right? But it just makes such an easy business of getting the cork. And I know it maybe doesn't look as fancy, but it's very practical. So I love my battery-operated wine cork removal. So I'm going to pour a little glass of this. Oh, my goodness, and I peek at the chat, and it's filling up. I figure everyone would be kind of slow getting around here. So let me see who's joining us. Let's see here. Hey, Barbara, how are you? Hi, DS. Hi, Eugenia. Oh, I'm so glad you're excited for this. I'm excited too, to be honest with you. I am, my belly has just been rumbling. Um, oh, you wanted to make brown butter pasta like we used to get at Old Spaghetti Factory. I didn't realize they had a brown butter butter pasta. Well, I'll be very anxious to see like what your thoughts are when you see this recipe come together. What I like a lot about this recipe that I'll tell you about in a minute is that it's very easy. Um, and there's certain things that you must have and certain things that I think are just embellishments. So, um, so we'll talk about that. So I feel like with most people, as long as they had the ricotta cheese, that they'd be able to get everything else. Um, by the way, fun fact, you know, um, your friend Philly Philly here, <laughs> forgets things. Philly Philly is forgetful at times. And what was so funny was for the little thumbnail picture that I was going to have it take right before I went on, um, <laughs> I was going to put like a big package of butter here just because butter was kind of one of our stars for this meal. And I go in my refrigerator and fortunately, have you ever seen the book Fortunately, Unfortunately? Fortunately, I have just enough butter for this meal. Unfortunately, it is the last of my butter. I don't know the last time I have had no butter. Like that just is not a reality here. Um, I think what happened was when I went to the, and I order my, my main groceries, I order and I pick up. I've been doing that since, um, I think one of my two jobs ago. It was just before we lived in the city, I was traveling in the city and I just, it took up more time with my commute before we moved here, and in any event, I decided to start ordering groceries before it was vogue to do so, and certainly before the pandemic. So I've been doing it for a while, and I do love to go to a market and pick things out, but there's many things I don't need to be there to pick out, and so I do order my groceries. And I was supposed to get butter last week, completely forgot. So there is zero butter except for what we need for our recipe today. So I'm feeling really fortunate because I didn't even realize it until maybe 10 minutes ago. And I was like, oh my goodness. So that is going on the list and better not have butter if it's going to be the next few days. But yes, I hope you'll like it. And love the sweater. Oh, love the sweater. Nice color. Thank you, DS. This is my one of my big fall sweaters. It was chilly today here in Philly. How was it in New York? I'm sure it was chilly there too. 
Tonight's supposed to get really cold and windy. So tomorrow, I think it might be even 29 when I get up and out to go over to, to the school. So it is going to be a chilly one tonight. Uh, and hi, Ruby. Please tell your sweetie that I said hello. And Ruby likes the boots. Yep. Yep, this was my warm outfit. So at my school um, where I do my reading groups, I have to go into another building. And so I have to go outside and then inside. And so I had my warmest coat. And even though today really wasn't that bad, I thought it might be worse. So I have my warm boots. I have my sweater. And yeah. And then when I came into my place, our place, because it has, um, it's just like one side of our, our condo is all glass. And so it really just absorbs heat, <laughs> which is a great problem to have. We rarely use our heater because the rest of the building, the sun, like we actually, it rarely gets very even cold enough for the heat to come on here. And um, so I come in today and I was like, oh, I'm going to be cooking. I need to, so I opened the window to let cold air in. Hubs would have been like, you know, <laughs> I'm the one that's always warm. He's the one that's always cold, but he is not here today. He has an event that he has to go, had to go to with work. So he'll be home late. I don't even think he'll see the end of it, but thank you so much. Um, and let's see here. Hey, Matthew, it's so good to have you come on and you are listing lots of delicious pasta. That sounds absolutely amazing. You know what, DS? So DS was mentioning, which I love this, and I do have heavy cream. He was mentioning if we have heavy cream and a mixer, you can make butter. So true story. And by the way, if you are just watching this as a video, like later today or tomorrow and the future, um, you can just fast forward <laughs> until you see me start to actually cook. My apologies, but this is a live stream. So we have some chatting to do. I have some wonderful guests here that popped on to see what was going on. So um, I just wanted to let you know, DS, before, so I've been an educator for so many years and I've done very different things. I've been classroom teacher. I've been um, a coach for teachers in their literacy practices, and I've also been a preschool director. I was a preschool director for about almost 10 years, and we used to, before Thanksgiving, we would have a preschool-wide Thanksgiving feast. It wasn't, it wasn't a huge, I mean, it was a pretty big preschool, but it wasn't like this. It was very doable um, to have this like school-wide Thanksgiving feast, and we made homemade butter, all the classes, we would put um, in a jar heavy cream, some marbles that help it mix up, and uh, we would usually actually put it in, it was best to do it in like peanut butter jars, not glass ones, the plastic ones, and you'd screw on the lid with the marbles and shake, shake, they'd sit in a circle, shake, 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 and eventually it became butter. So that's how the children learned about how butter was made. And you're right, that honestly is some of the best butter. If you never have a chance, or if you ever have a chance, make some homemade butter. It's super easy. As DS said, you could use a blender or you could just use an old jar, not glass, because it would be very jingly. Um, and you don't have to put the marbles in, it just speeds it up a bit, but really just the shaking. So if you weren't using marbles, a glass jar would be fine, like one of those bell jars that we have. But, uh, but yes. Homemade butter is phenomenal. And for our butter today, by the way, it should be unsalted. So just like with, for me, with any cooking, the only time I use salted butter is when I'm using it to put on the table, you know, for someone uh, to spread on, you know, rolls or bread. Uh, that's the only time I have salted butter. So thanks for mentioning that. And Eugenia says it's really rainy, but relatively warm here. Pineapple Express, as they call it. Yeah, I heard that actually on the weather. You're, you're not wrong. And it's actually, after we have a really cold day tomorrow, on Friday, it's going to start warming up. And I, I feel like Friday, it might be, um, or maybe it's Saturday, it's going to be like 60 or, I don't know. It's just, we've been having this like up and down weather-wise. It's been a little crazy. And unfortunately, all the rain comes on the weekends here, which has been really a bummer. So anyways, but so good to, to see you all, or not, I wish I could see you all, but to hear from you all. Uh, but yes, let me taste this wine, make sure it's still good. Oh, that's just so good. It is just like a warm hug. Um, not that this is warm, like it's room temperature, but it just, I don't know, like a good wine, especially a Pinot Noir, because, you know, Pinot Noir, you can definitely drink on its own. You don't have to have food with it. And it's just delightful. Now, Hubs isn't here to get on me about the fact of how many sips will I even take of this during the stream, but I just like knowing it's there. It's just, it's just nice to have a sip every now and again. So this recipe. 
If you are not following Cafe Haley, um, Kat, and I have her link below, you should. I enjoy so many content creators on the variety of social media that we have. And she, I believe, is on YouTube, Instagram, and there might be one more, but I'm sure TikTok. But where I see her is on YouTube and Instagram. And she just is phenomenal. She creates, and, it, and what I like about her is it's really, it's not for show, it's all about the food. And I know, you know, for some content creators, like the show, I mean, everyone has their own, their own way, right? I mean, I don't know what I call my way, <laughs> except for I talk a lot. But you know, everyone has their own way. But Cafe ha Haley, in Cafe Haley, she is just all about the food and she just creates wonderful things. So I drool every time I see one of her videos. So if you're not, look, if you're not following her, and of course she has no idea I'm saying this, you should, because she really is fabulous. And you know, I have been hearing and actually using brown butter a lot this past year. In fact, if any of you remember when we celebrated the um, 500 subscribers, I made brown butter, um, I think it was from Pinch of Yum, brown butter chocolate chip cookies. And honestly, they are some of the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever had. Using the brown butter and sprinkling, sprinkling a little salt. Oh my goodness. And then this week I also saw, and I'm forgetting who this one is. It's another one that I enjoy on Instagram. Well Made by Kylie. And in fact, she just hooked up with Tasty Made. So she's actually going to be not only making content on some of the different social media, but she's also doing it through, not Tasty, Tasty or Tasty Made. Anyway, she made brown butter chocolate brownies. And I was like, of course, I, one of my biggest hacks I do with making brownies is I use Ghirardelli brownie mix. I add melted butter and um, an eye to the liquid, the water, I always add some espresso powder so that it's basically like adding a shot of espresso and it makes the most delicious brownies. And I always add extra chocolate chips. I buy them with chocolate chips, which are Ghirardelli. I love Ghirardelli chocolate. And I add extra of the 60%, um, uh, whatever that ratio is, you know what I mean? And it's, so they're dark and they're delicious. So I, but I, I never thought, like I've made these this way for years, never thought to brown it. Like, so it just creates a level of flavor. And so you know if we're tasting it in sweets, we are also going to taste it in our savory. And even more so, one of my favorite things um, to have is honestly uh, ricotta gnocchi, which I've made um, here, I think last year around this time with Matt. I made it with him and showed him I've been making them for years is to honestly just toss them in some brown butter and sage, salt and pepper, maybe a sprinkling of Parmesan, but honestly, with the brown butter and sage and salt and pepper, I'm good to go. So brown butter just brings butter to a whole new level. Level. I mean, you know we always say everything's better with butter. Everything's even better with brown butter. So today, um, our recipe from Cafe Haley is going to involve a couple different steps. Um, one of the first steps we're gonna do is we're gonna get the topping. And this is something else I know I've been telling you guys. If you are not putting a crunchy topping on your pasta, and I wouldn't say all pastas, but there's some that you can elevate, or maybe sometimes you have it with a topping and sometimes you don't. And that topping usually involves breadcrumbs. If you're not doing that, you should start. And some of you might remember the other week I made a, um, and I forget who was the content creator, but I tried her pumpkin pasta and it had, again, a crunchy bread, um, topping that I think, I'm trying to remember, I think there was some rosemary in that and then I crinkled the rosemary, like I, some rosemary oil. It, it just elevates your pasta. You know, it's team texture. It gives you that crunchy layer, it gives you the creamy layer, the salty, the rich, the, it just, it gives you some, something of everything. And one of my favorite things when I make aglio olio is to add a breadcrumb mixture. And so I did put my, the link below of how I make my aglio e olio. Um, and I just, I just love that, that texture. To me, it just elevates the dish. And especially with simple dishes, it just like brings it to another level. And it also makes it, in my humble opinion, a little fancier. So like, you know, say when you're just quickly stirring together some aglio olio, you're like, I'm not gonna mess with the breadcrumbs because I'm hungry, I wanna eat. But maybe if you're having a guest over or you're cooking for a date, maybe you're like, I'm gonna do the little breadcrumb because it just really elevates it. So we're gonna create a breadcrumb topping with oil, sage, and breadcrumbs, and garlic. 
Um, so it's good Hubs isn't here for this one. I, I will tell you how I would adjust it for people that are a little garlic sensitive like Hubs is. I'm not, so I'm not gonna worry about it uh, for tonight, but I'm gonna talk about that. And then we are gonna be browning some butter, adding it to uh, our ricotta in the little um, Cuisinart. Um, and then when we toss it all together, we're gonna make sure we have some pasta water and we're going to be tossing it with the mixture. Um, and then once we plate, I'm adding Pecorino Romano. And then once we plate it, we are going to put some lemon zest on there. We are also going to drizzle a little EVOO, a little extra virgin olive oil, and then put our crunchy topping. So this is gonna be delightful. Something so simple that's elevated because a couple different steps. And it's gonna seem long, I think today, not that it's gonna be that long, but because I'm talking, I'm chatty, right? But if you're just in your kitchen, like none of this takes that long. So I think we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna get that crunchy topping. So I'm actually gonna bring you over here. I'm gonna check out the chat, then bring you over here so that you can see how we make that crunchy topping. And actually, you know what? After I check out the chat, I'm gonna get the garlic chopped first, then I'll bring you over. So let's see what I've missed. Hey, Kathy, welcome. Hey, Flo, welcome to the stream. I know a lot of times you either watch later or watch from afar, so it's so good for you to pop in and say hi. In fact, if anyone is watching and they just wanna pop in and say hi, you can always go back to your comfy seat and stay silent if you wish, but, and you can always just stay silent. But if you wanna say hi, we would love to, uh, to give, a, give a warm welcome because we have some wonderful people here on this chat, so you know, we would love to say hello. And, oh, you're, you're fine. You know me, Kathy. I've been chit-chatting with my friends here, so we've been good. I poured myself a little glass of wine, so you are good. And Archie, hey, Archie. You know Archie wanting to make the late appearance, right, my friend? To make the big ta-da. And hope all is well at the Philly Posse. Everything is well here. I mean, we've got, a, as DS would know, and I'm sure some of the other people in the States, uh, you know, the Philly was a little active this week. So, you know, it's a, this is a good getaway, right? From um, the challenges that all of us are facing in all the communities we live in. So, um, so yeah, so it's good to have a little food, fellowship and peace, right friends? So good to see everybody. Yes, this is gonna be excellent. All right, so I'm gonna get started. So first let me chop up this garlic. So where did I put my garlic? Oh, right here. I already warmed up my, um, my water, but I'll, I'll turn it on when we're starting to get the, the butter browned. Um, so in any event, so the, I'm breaking this recipe down. In the recipe, she cooks a pound of pasta. So the sauce she has in her recipe, and I did link it below, and I also linked the little um, short, like the little brief video that kind of shows all the steps. So I encourage you to watch both. both. Um, so I'm going to be kind of splitting it into four, but... You know, I'm a co I cook. I wouldn't, I mean, do I say I'm a cook? I guess I'm a cook. I've been cooking for so many years. But I kind of, like, don't want to um, skimp on the sauce. So you'll just see. It might not be, everything might not be an exact quarter, but I'm just trying to make sure I don't skimp on things. So, uh, so my measurements are just for one person. Just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do to make my oil and that I'm going to use to make my crunchy topping is first of all, I'm going to be chopping up two cloves of garlic. So if you have someone or you yourself are garlic sensitive, not everyone agrees with garlic, or I should say garlic doesn't agree with everybody. Um, or if you know someone that's sensitive, what I might suggest is just smashing these and let these kind of flavor up the oil. And you've seen me do this on this channel before. And, or you could slice it and then take away the slices and just have this delightful flavored oil. But for me, because I'm not garlic averse and garlic is quite friendly to me. And I have my own opinion about some of that, by the way. Um, I've just noticed with people that I know that it seems like sometimes when the more people are averse to things, and this is just a theory, a very unmedical theory, um, but I feel like sometimes when people are very averse to things so they don't eat it, oh, I have my most terrible, this is Lazy Philly. I'm using my most terrible um, chopping board <laughs> because I'm lazy. I don't want to get my bigger one out and have to wash it because I'm in charge of all my dishes. And the other small ones we have that are wood and nicer, we use for, we don't use for um, 
things like garlic. We, we use them for cheeses, we use them for cocktails, you know, lemon, lime, that kind of stuff. So I, and herbs sometimes, but I don't want to put garlic because if I do garlic and Hubs uses the same side I uses and makes one of his, what does he love? Um, gin and tonics and has a garlicky gin and tonic because of the garlic oils that are left, he will not be happy with me. So I guess I could do that on April Fool's Day. That might be fun. But for today, I'm going to use this little crappy one um, just to get the job done. So I'm just chopping this up quite fine. I would not, in this application, uh, use my microplane for this because you do want little chunks. So this is what Cafe Haley does. You can do this, or you can do slices, or you can smush it. But we're going to flavor that oil. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you all over so you can see what we're doing. I'm first going to put the heat on under my little pan here. I'll be using this pan for a lot of things. Let me bring you all over. Come into my, oh, before I bring you all over, I gotta show you, I know I showed a picture. Ta-da! Oh, Christmas tree. And it's hard to see the star there. Let me see if I can get you, now, because the star is kind of facing sideways. There is our lovely tree, and you can see all my business that's usually on my counter that I had to move here, just keeping it real for y'all. All right, so we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna put this down so you can see. One second, friends. And I'm gonna do one more shift so we can get close, up close and personal. There we go. Sorry for any of the seasickness that, me, that you might have. And let me get my neutral oil. For me, it's just going to be some sunflower oil. We're gonna just put a little layer here. This is gonna be more than we need but I can always save it because that garlic oil would be delicious on a variety of things. Now, one of the things she says to do is, I'm putting in straight away, she recommends browning it in cold oil because she feels like it browns more evenly. And that was a great tip. Let me get my little spatula there or my little paddle. So I thought that was a great tip. I'd had no one tell me that. Usually it's like your oil must be at least warmed and everything, but I thought that was great. So we're gonna let this come. And what we're looking for is we are looking for it to um, start bubbling up. You can see it's gonna start doing that. And then once it starts calming down is when it'll be done. So we're just gonna kinda keep our eye on it. And then we're gonna remove it. In fact, let me get my little, I need to move y'all just a quick second because I need to get one of these my fine strainer, there we go, okay, there we go. I don't want it to burn, so I'm gonna watch it, watch it very carefully, and I have this container to put the garlic in, or actually, the oil will go in there, um, and then I'm gonna get another one of these, in fact, let me get another one of these right now, there we go. I'm gonna put the garlic oil in this one. And then, so it smells delightful. This is what's great about garlic, right friends? Is it just smells so good. So you can see here, it's not even getting really any color yet. But again, I don't know if any of you, maybe I'm sure like maybe Archie and DS already knew about that tip, but I did not know to start in a cool pan. Now I'm gonna actually reduce it to medium because I know this can go south super quick it's not quite done yet she said again you'll notice that the garlic is at its peak when it just doesn't bubble as enough enough or not enough as much and it'll be a nice golden brown we don't want it burned for sure so we're just going to get this nice and crunchy because it'll add to the crunchy topping which i'm super excited about i'm just trying to keep it moving because same with when we brown our butter if we keep it moving it'll help it hopefully not burn in spots because some of our pieces are quite tiny and I do want to keep an eye out. So I don't know if y'all can see, but that is starting to get a little brown. Can you see that friends? It's starting to get a little brown. In fact, I think we're going to take it out in just a second. We're almost there. And I think we're there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour this here and get my little spatula get all this yummy stuff out of here. And then I'm gonna drain this on a paper towel to get any of the extra oil off. There we go. And I'm gonna wipe out this. So let me just wipe this out real quick. 
There we go. And I'm going to put that on this that I just used to wipe out. So I'm not wasting anything. There we go. There is our crunchy garlic. How lovely does that look? Let me show y'all. See our crunchy garlic? Nice. Perfect. It is perfectly colored. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be putting, I don't know, I think it'll be about, not too much. I'm, I'm shooting for probably about a half a tablespoon. There we go. Maybe a teaspoon. Oh, wait, actually, I, I lied. I'm so sorry, I lied. I'm putting this all in. <laughs> I forgot my steps because I do want this to come up and I'm gonna get that little piece of garlic so it doesn't taint things. Let me just get this little piece of garlic that stuck to the pan. There we go. I almost forgot my sage leaves. So we're gonna fry some sage right now and we're gonna add those to our pile. So we're gonna put our sage in. Oh, woo! look at that. Look at that. And I realized I did not get out. Let me get out my regular toothpicks, not toothpicks, um, chopsticks. You're gonna see my poor chopstick skills. Come on, oh my goodness. There we go, come on, get it, get it, nope. Get those, there we go, flip that, flip this fella. There we go. So we're gonna get these fried. And then we're gonna put them right over here where our garlic is so they can drain a little bit too. I'm gonna to taste a little piece of our, oh, that is so good. It is crunchy and delicious. Okay, absolutely delightful. And I think, I think they're done because I think once they stop bubbling, the water is out and they are usually about done then. Just let them go one more second. So as you notice, our oil is getting flavored by garlic and now by sage. All right, so now let's get those out. Put those there. And these we can put, um, we'll crunch these up when we mix everything together. Now I'm going to actually pour this back out. And let me just wipe the bottom of that real quick, friends. You can see our little itty bit of, bit of butter that's there waiting for our brown butter pasta. Okay, now I'm going to pour a little bit more of this in. Again, maybe about a teaspoon to a half a tablespoon. And then I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to be adding to the here um, about a quarter cup of panko. Because half of it is a quarter cup. And frankly, I all I could think of to myself was, I want that. Like, I want plenty of this crunchy topping. Because I'm telling you, this crunchy topping makes all the difference. And we're just gonna toast this. My panko is a mixture of whole wheat panko and white. You could just use white or you could just use whole wheat. That's why some of it's already brown because I literally mixed. I'm just being real with you. I, I had some that was still yet to be gone and I didn't have room to have both containers, so I mixed them up. I'm also gonna add to this a little salt and pepper. Get some seasoning. There we go. So since some of it's already brown, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. But you can see, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. I don't want to get to get too done. Let me see what everyone's saying here. Garlic is good for the soul flow. I absolutely, absolutely agree with you. <laughs> and Archie, actually, my color is almost red. It's kind of like a burnt orange. That's, uh, and I, I'm not sure how the color looks on the TV, but it's actually like a burnt orange there. Pink spatula, just for you. Eugenia said, I make James Beard's chicken with 40 cloves of garlic. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted to make that. That sounds like absolute divinity to me. Okay, we're almost done there. They've got the flavor, they've gotten some salt and pepper. Yes, that and dressing, those are two good uses. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to just kind of take it here. Now what I want to do is I want to crumble these. These are my sage leaves. I'm going to crumble them in to here. So I'm just crumbling them. They're crumbling right up. 
although I think I have more in my hands that are getting in there, but that's fine. That's why I wanted to make sure I did plenty of sage leaves. Let me just rinse off my hands. And then I'm gonna add this garlic to it. And look at this lovely topping we're gonna to have on top of our pasta. Absolutely delicious. So this, this topping is gonna to be breadcrumbs, garlic, sage. I'm gonna taste it just to make sure I have the seasoning right because you know we want every part to be seasoned well. The, the fire is off here, but I do wanna give it just a little taste and just see. Oh, that's delightful. As Kathy Haley would say, this is good as a snack. I mean, this you could put on anything. Again, that bread butter topping thing is just gold with, with um, pastas. Oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. Let's see Phil try to get a pan <laughs> into this tiny little cup. Oh, it is fun. This live cooking, you never know what you're gonna see. Let's see how many crumbs end up making it on the counter. All right, there we go. Oh, I, oh that one wouldn't go well. Okay, you know the cleanup is always fun here in my household. There we go, I'm gonna wipe out this pan because we are gonna be using it for our brown butter, which is next. Okay, there we go. So before I start my brown butter, friends, I'm gonna show you right over here. Let me move this out of the way. Before we start our brown butter, I am going to come over here because, oh, I gotta show you something, by the way. Let me show you, because I wanted to show you this, by the way. But so over here, I've got um, an old recipe. And this recipe, DS, you were talking about how you were looking forward to it, is written um, by my aunt, my grandma's eldest daughter. Uh, my dad is the youngest in the family. And in any event, um, it's for the pecan rolls that I'm releasing a video at the end of the month, but I'm making them this weekend and then working on the video and giving myself plenty of time with the holidays and all. So what I wanna do first, by the way, is I wanna get my ricotta here and ready to go. Because once we have our brown butter ready, I'm just gonna pour it right in there and then begin whizzing it up. By the way, I have to say, I think you all know that I get a little worried about sounds on these videos. Well, I think y'all know that I, I kind of get worried about anything or everything, right? But I do, I feel like some of the loud noises, I just worry about what people's experiences are like, you know, being on their end. And I was watching the kitchen this weekend and Jeezy, who's um, George Sicarian, he's a great chef. He was whizzing something up and something very similar, I think it was even a Cuisinart. And it was so loud and it sounded just like mine and I, and I giggled because I'm like, even it happens to him, right? So it actually made my day just because, you know, it's like when you see those videos that even so-and-so goes to the grocery store. So I was just like, you know what? Even GZ has the loud Cuisinart when he's on his cooking show. So in here, let me just check my amounts for, for my one little serving. I'm going to be putting in a quarter cup of ricotta. And by the way, I am going to get my pot boiling because my pasta will take a little while. So I'm just going to eyeball a quarter cup. That looks about a quarter cup. I'm just going to add a tad, tiny bit more just to make sure. But yeah, I'm sure that's more than a quarter cup. But I think that'll be fine. And that way, it's ready for me to pour the butter in and whiz this up. OK, sorry, I'm kind of like behind the camera. Actually, maybe you all are preferring it that way, which I would totally understand. So now we are going to move it back to the stove. You can see I got the. Um, fire on back under on my pasta and let me get our brown butter going okay so before we get our brown butter going I did want to let you know a little bit about our pasta because I do need to measure that so this is the pasta we're gonna be using today um, I love me some packery so I think she uses um, uh, rigatoni and you could use really any pasta and especially these, I think, bigger, wider shapes are kind of nice and they're real toothsome, which is wonderful. So I only want four ounces of this. So I'm gonna actually move this back over there and measure that first. Let's see how much I can do in this very small space, friends. I'm actually going to, no, that's still too hot. Um, okay, we'll scooch back over here. I'll move you back over. I thought I was gonna see, I thought you were gonna see that and you're not. By the way, don't let me forget to tell you, let me just move this a second, about this guy, because there's going to be a giveaway this month. So don't let me, in the chat, do not let me forget to tell you about the giveaway this month. 
Okay, so let's go back to here. So we are going to measure um, the pasta because I want to make sure I only have four ounces. I mean, I really would love to have more than four ounces, but I want to make sure that I can fit in my clothes all this season. So due to that, I'm going to make sure I have four ounces. In our family, the serving size is two ounces. We just look at that as a suggestion. I don't know who just has two ounces of pasta unless it's a side. So we do four ounces in our family. So I'm just going to clear that. Oh, wait. No, I just messed it up. My, my son, Matt, would absolutely giggle at me right now because here I am. Fussing, oh, there we go. Back to that. There we go. That's how I... There we go. That's how we clear it. So I'm going to get four ounces. Four thirteen. That sounds good, right? I can go a little over, right, friends? A little over is just fine. Oh, no, that's all. But that will grow. It'll grow in the pot. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, so back to our brown butter. So let's get this butter browned. So on here, we are going to put it on medium heat. And one of the things they also talk about with um, browning butter, because browning butter can be a little dicey sometimes because it can go too far, just like garlic can go too far, so can butter. So you want it to be um, not super, super cold and in similar size pieces. So I don't want to get every little piece of butter. There we go. So let's get our butter on there. And I'm using a medium heat. And because I have such a small amount of butter here, it's going to go pretty fast if I'm, you know, if I'm being honest. It's going to go pretty quick. So we're going to let this first melt. And one of the things that's important to do, in fact, let me get, I need yet another tool, um, is, in fact, you know what, Arch, because you're here and you're such a dear friend, I'm going to get the whisk out, my friend, Eugenia. This is my mini one. This one will be perfect because the other time I was using it to actually mix something, it wasn't working so well, but this will be great. But one of the keys to making sure your, your butter browns evenly is to melt it evenly and then to keep it moving. So we're going to just let this go. And I see that my pasta is ready. You don't want to turn your back when you're browning butter. I'm going to get some salt in here. Because if you turn your back, it could end up being totally yucky, which is not good. I'm going to salt this nicely. Again, I'm using unsalted butter for, for this. I'm just going to keep it moving a little bit. And what actually gets brown when you brown butter are the milk solids. The solids are, those, are the parts that actually start turning a color. Another fun fact I learned this week, I was watching um, this content creator that I follow on Instagram, and he's a chef, and he was talking about, oh, our pasta boil thing is ready. I'm going to put this in, get that going. He's a chef, and he was talking about how um, a hack for... Um, clarifying butter is to do it in the microwave. And I responded, and, I, and there were a couple other hacks he had. He had some really good, good hacks. But that was one of the ones that I said, I go, you know what? I said, I've never had good luck with that. Whenever I try to do anything like that, it explodes. And he said, cut it in smaller pieces, which I'm sure some of my friends on here already knew that. But I didn't know that. I just know that sometimes it would explode and sometimes it wouldn't. And oh my gosh, friends, when that explodes in the microwave, oh, it's terrible. I mean, it is not fun by any stretch. So we're just going to let things go and keep an eye on our butter here. I'm just stirring my pasta to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm forgetting how long they are saying this pasta is going to take. So let me take a quick peek. 12 to 14 minutes. So yeah, I should have started that sooner. My goodness. Let's see, we'll check it in 10 minutes. Ah, so do you see even right now, is, is starting to get a little bit of color. The other recommendation they have is that you do it in a lighter pan so you can see. So it is almost here, but I wanna stir it definitely at this point, keep it moving so that not one part gets, you know, um, burnt. We just want it brown. And I think we are there. Yes, and you don't want to leave it in the pan because it'll continue to cook. So friends, do you see that color? 
You see that color? That's perfect. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it right in there. Okay? So I'm putting right there in my Cuisinart. And then I'm going to whiz it up. So let's get you back here so you can see. There we go. All right, so now let's put our lid on. And this is the fun part. We get our lid on. Oh, everything looks like it's gonna, nope, it isn't working. I knew that was gonna happen. Let's try it again. There we go, and we're gonna whiz it up. Let me take a peek. And it is creamy smooth. I'm just going to take some of this and let it go one more time because there's such a little bit. I just want to make sure it had a chance to whip up enough and make a nice smooth mixture. Let's see. I'm just going to try one more time. It looks lovely. And the smell, I mean, there is nothing like the smell of brown butter, is there? It's just delicious. There you go. All right, so that is done. So now I'm going to bring you back over. So let me tip you all up. Here, let's see if I have this about right. Let's bring y'all back and we'll get some things readjusted back to the front here of the kitchen, so to speak. Let me bring up my camera, go like that. There we go. It's so funny, this one side always seems to be a little dippy. I don't know why it does that, it's the oddest thing. All right, so there we go. Let me go a little higher. There we go, excellent. All right, so. Let's check our pasta, make sure our heat's off on everything else. Excellent. All right. Whoop, there we go. All done. You're all done. Now, one of the things we are going to add to, let me tidy up a little bit because we've got a lot going on that we don't need. We still need this for our lemon. We are done with our garlic. There we go. Let me take off this yumminess. We don't want to miss anything. Okay. I'm one of those people that, like, if I'm making cake or cookies, I am scraping that. Um, and if I'm not scraping it in for the recipe, then I'm scraping it into my mouth because <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. Like, right even in here, this kind of kills me. Oh. So what I'm noticing is that it just provides this richness to the ricotta and that flavor comes through. You taste the butter, but getting that, that nuttiness is absolutely delicious. This is gonna be outstanding. I'm very excited about it. Okay, so let me also take out my little blade here and then we're gonna be adding to here some Pecorino Romano cheese. So you could use Parmesan, I'm sure. Pecorino is nice. Um, well, they're both nice, but I think one of the things I always like about Pecorino is it just, it's just a little more forward, um, very salty, but a little more forward and just creates such a great flavor. So on here, just to back up, we had about a quarter cup of ricotta and I did um, about two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Okay, so to this mixture here, with this, I need to stir my pasta real quick. There we go. I think that's going to be fine now. So, and here's our lovely breadcrumbs that we made. So here we're going to be adding about a quarter cup of pecorino. So let me get my spoon. Here we are. Some pecorino romano that's grated. So we'll get about a quarter cup. I think that's about, and then I have this for sprinkling. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm not going to go way overboard because I can sprinkle some on there later. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this together by hand, and then this is going to go at the bottom of the pot once we drain our pasta. Now, this is a recipe where you want to make sure your pasta is fully cooked because it's not going to have a chance to cook in the sauce like so many different pasta recipes do. This one has got to be done. So I'll be making sure that it's the perfect bite um, before I take it out. All right, and so I do want to just check for seasoning in this. Mm. The Pecorino Romano adds so much saltiness, um, so I'm actually okay with the saltiness on this. I might add a little black pepper 
And then she actually puts black pepper on top of the pasta also. I'm gonna add a little black pepper to that. I'm gonna keep it here so we have it handy. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so good. All right, so all of our things are ready. The only other thing we'll need to do is we will need to, at the top, grate some um, lemon. And I, I am such like a saver. I don't like to waste anything. And we have two lemons that have been completely peeled off um, in other recipes, because lemon peel is such a great ingredient. And I do have a fresh new lemon, but why do that to a poor fresh new lemon? I've got another half of lemon here that has its peel, so I will use that when the time comes. So I have that ready to go. So let me see what I missed here. I know, Archie, I just, so Archie, I look at the chat and I see, I'm amazed the wine glass is still half full. And that was my reminder. That was like, that was like your little message from Hubs. Did he message you and say, tell her to drink some wine? So I'm going to take a little sip. Mm, that was funny because literally, you know, I, I've drank, that's maybe my third sip. So I think that's, that's so funny. Um, and let's see what else I missed. Marcy, welcome to the stream. I'm so sorry that I missed your entrance. Um, oh, <laughs> you're talking about the giveaway. Okay, okay, I gotta see. I gotta see here now. So Marcy said the crumb mixer is also good on top of broccoli chicken. Yes, honestly, Marcy, mac and cheese, I mean, vegetables. I think a bread, I mean, as long as the person, actually, even if they are gluten-free, there's gluten-free panko that they make now. But, um, but I'm telling you, it is just a game changer. It just elevates, whether it's veggies, whether it's pasta, it's just so good. Um, I kind of like, to me, that's like the little, that's the little elevated hack that makes it so easy. And you can do any different kinds of herbs. You don't even have to do herbs. You could, you could add cheese. I've done a crumb topping where I've added like some Parmesan cheese to it. Uh, yeah, just so delicious. You're, you're spot on. And then, oh, I gotta tell you about the, the, the giveaway. So, as you, so you usually get a chance to see at least a portion of my kitchen. And over there, I think y'all saw, oh wait, oh no, we're fuzzy. Something must have happened. Let me just check. I might have mucked up my camera because one thing I noticed when I, um, when I watched the last video is I must have touched, oh, it's actually not too bad. When I, when I must have touched, sorry friends, the lens and I noticed that my last uh, live stream and video kind of looked like I had, like I had a filter on. <laughs> Everything was softened, which wasn't too bad. I mean, I actually didn't mind that so much. But I'm like, well, what's wrong with that? And I think it was just, I hadn't made sure my lenses were clean. So it is looking fuzzy, so it might be buffering a little. So friends, if your picture is not that clear, my apologies. When this happened the last time, I will say uh, the video turned out fine. It was just, I think, for my live stream friends. So thank you so much for your patience with the fuzziness. But this is a special gift that I got from my sister. Um, you know, I, I've talked about her a few times. I don't talk about her all the time. I talk about Hubs a lot because he's always here. But my sister and I are super close. She is definitely my best friend. And she gave this to me years ago because I cook. And it's just, I think, the most delightful looking nutcracker. No jokes, Archie. In any event, um, it's just, and what I love about it is it is a chef. It has the, um, the hat. And of course, this is a chef of some sweets right now. And we're going to be heading into that season. So what I want to do is, as you saw, I'm going to put it right back over there next to my air fryer, is in one of the videos or streams this month, I'm going to move it. Your job is to notice when I do and be the first to alert me. So people on the live stream that are chatting will have a, um, a better opportunity to do it. So that's what I encourage you to do because if you see it and you chat it live first, then you will win the giveaway. Now, Diaz has already been a giveaway winner um, and he can vouch, right, Diaz, that I, I back it up. I sent you something from Philly. I went to one of our Philly shops and I sent him a tea towel that has pretzels, soft pretzels all over it. Um, so I'm not sure what I will be sending the winner, but I will send you something, I promise. And I promise it will, I try to make it as delightful as possible. So that is our giveaway. So if you are the first to notice that the nutcracker moved and, you know, and say, you know, the nutcracker moved. I mean, you can just say whatever you want to say. It just has to involve the nutcracker so I know what you're talking about. 
but if you're the first to notice, um, and he has moved. So if you say it and I'm like, no, 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 he's, he's still in his spot, well, then you wouldn't win. But if you notice where he moves or that he moves and mention it first, you will be my giveaway winner. So, so yeah, so I thought we'd do that for the holidays, make things a little fun and festive here uh, approaching Christmas. So that is that. And let me see what else I missed here. And <laughs> a, little, a little smack talk from DS and Archie. And, um, oh, and Marcy was saying that she makes her Alfredo sauce from scratch and it's much, oh, I agree. I agree. And Marcy, I've been noticing for the past year that the whole thing of, you know, because I know I've made an Alfredo from scratch with heavy cream and that I let thicken and then, um, you know, add some uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, some black pepper, and maybe a little um, shaving of, uh, on, the, on the microplane of um, nutmeg just to give it that little something something. And I mean, I think these might be ready. Let me just check. In any event, one second, um, let me let that cool a second. Um, then I saw that apparently where that came from, I know that's what we do here in America, was they just would toss it with butter and then uh, Parmesan cheese, which I thought was so interesting. Mm, not done yet. It's too al dente. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that go. So I don't forget, because I can get chatty, you all know. I'm going to let that go. I'm putting two minutes, just so I don't forget. But I think it'll be somewhere between one and two minutes. So yes, that is excellent. And Chef Archie Pie is traumatized. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are hysterical. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was what the offensive article was, was my rainbow whisk. I see, Archie. I see it. Oh, it smells so good in here, GS. So good. So Marcy was also saying I use canned goods, box mac and cheese, and ravioli in cans for my kids when they're little at time. Um, no. Oh, everything is from scratch now. Yes, right? We all used hacks when the kids were, were younger. And let me see here. Let me catch up. Nutcracker winner is in line, and isn't it just isn't it just appropriate flow that it's the Nutcracker on the line? I think that's actually kind of funny. So who will crack Hub's nuts? If you well, I'm not giving away the Nutcracker. That is near and dear to me from my sister, but I will pick a Philly present to send your way for sure. <laughs> Archie, you're being you're being salty, my friend, but you crack me up. All right. Yes. So Marcy, what do you like to add to the Alfredo sauce? I've only added um, Parmigiano Reggiano, although one cheese I like to use in place of it is, um, gran and I think they're very similar, is Grana Padano. Am I saying it right? Grana Padana or Padano. I really like that cheese too. It has that nuttiness, which is good. All right. Um, ours should be done. And I would always err on it being underdone than overdone because I do, oops, wait, wait a second. Turned on my microwave because I don't want it overdone. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some pasta water because we might need pasta water for this final dish. So I'm gonna remove some and I'm gonna take this and strain it. I have my strainer over here, so my pasta is done. I'm gonna strain it. Woo, that is hot. Hot, hot, hot. I'm gonna take my pan. I'm gonna turn off the heat because we don't need the heat. Actually, I don't need to even be over there. I'm going to bring my pan over here and just, I don't need to put this down, but it'll just keep it a little softer. And then I'm going to add my cheese to the pan. Oh my gosh, is this not going to be delicious? Okay. And I think I just might have to do this. Mm. Oh, that is so yummy. I'm going to add my pasta. And I realized just now, and you know it wouldn't be a stream without me making a mistake, that I was supposed to add the pecorino a little bit later. <laughs> but, oh well. Such is, right? So I just added a little bit of um, the pasta water because I, I don't want to over add. So I'm just going to toss it. I added the pecorino with the cheese, which I really think at the end of the day it's not really going to matter. But how Cafe Haley did, 
she actually added it um, after she had tossed the brown butter ricotta with the pasta. So let me show you. Oh my gosh, this looks fabulous. It looks fabulous already. We haven't even like made it even more yummy. So I feel it is my duty. Oh, my friends, what I do for you. I feel it is my duty to take a little taste, make sure it's seasoned well enough before I put it in a dish. I think it just needs a tad, just a tad bit of salt. Just a tad. There we go. I want this to be perfect. All right. This is absolutely delicious. Okay. And now I'm going to get it in my dish. Okay. So we're going to put it in here. This lovely sauce. I'm not going to waste any. This is why I added more <laughs> than she called for, for just one serving, because I thought I want to make sure that I do not skimp on this absolutely delicious sauce. Mm. Oh my gosh, addictive. Remember I made this summer, or September maybe it was, the lemon ricotta pasta, which was delicious and easy and great because it was a no-cook sauce. Actually, this is no cook sauce, too, to, to a degree, but much more with the brown butter. I guess it's really not a no cook sauce. Forgive me. I, I actually, I digress. But um, what I will say is that um, this is just like a whole new level. So I'm going to now add a little extra black pepper. I'm going to add um, some lemon peel. I'm going to do it right on top. And the lemon peel just adds that little bit of freshness. You could, I noticed that she didn't add um, any herbs to it. I mean, the sage is in, you know, the oil. But I also wonder if that was intentional because she doesn't do anything unintentionally, this Haley chef. Um, and I think though the lemon is meant to kind of freshen it up, that lemon peel. Then I'm gonna give it a little drizzle of olive oil because why not? And then I'm going to, I'm actually not going to add any extra cheese. I actually think it, the cheese in there is fine, but I am going to add these delicious crumbs. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to bring you over to see this deliciousness. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So let me show you what this looks like overhead. Friends, look at that. I'm trying not to shake so much. Look at that. It is absolutely delicious. And let me do this so you can see the Christmas tree. Let me move this so that we're not looking at the computer. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. Beautiful. Beautiful. Want my little ring light on the left. Gotta love that, right? Absolutely delicious. Okay, so now we're going to try it. Let me go back. Bring y'all back. And we were chit-chatty, but this does not need to take long. If you're not chatty and you don't have someone bugging you in the kitchen, it's not going to take long. Let me take a sip of wine. All right, let's see. I'm going to get this piece on top. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is so delightful. It is because of the steps we've done, because of making the crispy topping, um, browning the butter, it just has a depth, which often ricotta sauces don't. They're kind of, they're delicious, they're creamy, but they're not often complex. It just makes it all more complex. I don't know if you can see there, the sauce is perfectly creamy. Using, whizzing it up in the Cuisinart, you could have just whisked it, you know, and it'd be fine. Like it might have a little still of that grit that ricotta has, but whizzing it up makes it absolutely smooth, absolutely decadent. This is fantastic. I highly recommend this is, this you could serve at the holidays. You could do it as a first course. You could do it as a main course with a salad. Um, it's outstanding and so easy. And, you know, you could do the topping ahead of time so that really, and actually you could even make, the sauce ahead of time and then just 
you know, refrigerate it and then let it come more to room temperature before you add it and toss the pasta. Like you could do a lot of prep ahead of time. This is phenomenal. Friends, totally recommend. Thank you, Cafe Haley. This is absolutely outstanding. I'm glad I follow you because you have great recipes. Um, and friends, oh my goodness, Marcy and Archie and DS and Eugenia and Flo and Kathy and Barbara. And did I say Archie? I think I said Archie and DS. Um, and Matthew Whittington for coming on. I hope I didn't forget anybody. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful chatting with you and drinking very few sips of wine, but it was lovely to have it there. Um, it's Wednesday, Wine Wednesday, and it's great with pasta. So I hope you have a great rest of the week. Oh, by the way, um, and if you like this video and if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and share. But coming up next week on Tuesday, I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited. I, Hubs and I, especially me, Hubs maybe not as much as me, really enjoyed, I really enjoyed tasting some of the trends. And um, I've been seeing so many beautiful cocktails come by for the holidays. And so um, we're gonna be trying a slew of them. At this point, it's at four. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be more than four, so you'll just have to tune in to see. But there's all different kinds of holiday cocktails. And none is a sangria, because I've already been there, done that. So I already did my, my fall that became a Christmas sangria last year. Uh, so it's seven o'clock, it's a little bit later on the 12th of this month, and it's called Sip or Dip. And I had to bring a little of the youth into this stream because my youngest says, hey, I'm gonna dip, which means I'm gonna leave um, and like head out. So I thought Sip or Dip, meaning should we sip this or should we just leave it and, and go? So that is my take on the holiday cocktails. I will let you know um, how they are, if they're worth making, or if you should pass on them. So that will be the stream next week. And it should be a fun one. And Hubs will be there for that one. I already checked with them and made sure. And friends, until we eat again, I hope you have a great week. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys.